keeping the pirate thing going. Lots of great comments, including from old pirates themselves. So I've got one more coming at ya. Pirate radio stories from the 90s and beyond. In the 90s, CDs were king. We all had computers and even internet near the end, but not a lot of broadband. Even live sound had problems getting through dial-up modems. All the cool kids were on FM, listening to FM that is, and for international broadcasting, shortwave was having its last really good decade. Prominent Sydney ham, Sam Voron, who at one time edited Dick Smith Funray books, was well known for touring the world's trouble spots. He wasn't a casual tourist either. Rebels on the island of Bougainville were fighting for independence from the Papua New Guinea government. Voron helped out by setting up clandestine shortwave station Radio Free Bougainville for the Bougainville Revolutionary Army. Voron went on to do other stuff on the Horn of Africa and converted to Islam. Alan Yates, for a while, VK2ZAY, built pirate station 2HOT-FM as a kid in the 90s. With a power of 2 watts, it could be heard around Sydney. Fully quieting range, about 2 kilometres. Alan never got caught, but shut down when girlfriends, CB and schoolwork intervened. A write-up appears on Alan's website, which has numerous other homebrew radio designs. Alan got a big high-tech job and moved to the US. In the 90s, there was Energy FM transmitting from Hobart. They started off pirate, but eventually became legal with a narrowcast license. As the sun goes down over the city, there's a small group of people who come out and from these rudimentary aerials send out a radio sound with a difference. Good evening Hobart and thanks for joining us. This is Matt with you tonight on Hobart's Energy FM. I hope you can stay with me till late because we're all set to go till late night. Wikipedia's entry for Pirate Radio in Australia mentions Radio Hines from Rangaratta and Another, Rex FM in the Ballarat CBD. That was around 1991 and 1992. Radio Hines broadcast for three months with 50 watts power, enough to cover a country town like Rangaratta. Apparently it got a lot of listeners and was forced to shut down because the established stations didn't like it. Information about other 90s radio broadcast pirates required a lot of searching. Many would not have made the mainstream media, and even if they did, articles aren't easily available on Trove. Specialist forums are a good source. The piratearchive.net forum lists several pirates that were active in the 90s and 2000s. Reading from it, here's a few. 3PP, radio station set up on December 30th, 1992, in the inner suburbs of Melbourne from before 10pm till after midnight. That featured music and talk. Then there were shortwave pirates in the 90s, from Australia, hurled worldwide. They were Radio G'day, and Tasmania Radio International. Now, interestingly, there is something later called Hobart Radio International in about 2004. Not sure if they're related, but you can still see the Hobart Radio International website today. Kickass FM, pirate station in Brisbane, was on various frequencies in 1999, apparently quite strong, playing mix and dance music. 2001 Radio Eureka made several broadcasts with power of about 12 watts on 6235 kilohertz. Again, shortwave. Not sure where that was from. And with a bit more power, but still also on shortwave, on the 22nd of August 2004 was Tower Radio on 11412 kilohertz. Running about 50 watts. 
In 2008, FM Pirates from New South Wales seem to be quite a few. Rate 90.8 Hurstville and 99.5 Southern Highlands. And another one on 93.9. Not much information on those. Going back to 2004, there was Radio Free Glendore that was on the plains in suburban Adelaide. Now, I didn't know about this one. I got an email in response to my previous pirate video. So, yeah, apparently that was running about one watt to a folded dipole on the chimney. And the broadcast came from an SVHS video running at half speed, giving eight hours of programming. And so that could be updated every couple of days. That was eventually got caught when a low power narrow car station in the Adelaide Hills, about 20 kilometres away, heard the signal and reported them. Now in 2007, there was the possible hijacking of Channel 7 TV. Um, a bit of information on Wikipedia about that. Now sometimes pirates dreams come true. Now here's a great story. Sydney's Tim Wong C started playing with FM wireless microphones in 2007 at age 10. He aspired to work in radio and set up pirate 24-hour station 2FT in West Pennant Hills in northwest Sydney. The now more powerful transmitter was moved to under the house, presumably to avoid stray RF problems getting into the mixing desks, etc. I'm, I'm just guessing here. Anyway, it was heard in areas like Parramatta, Rydalmere, and even Cornell, all the way out on Botany Bay. There were interference complaints, though, and Tim's mum got a knock on the door from ACMA inspectors. 14-year-old Tim turned the station off, volunteered for community radio, and did a radio course with... AFRTS, Australian Film and Radio Television School. Fast forward a little bit, and he's now behind the microphone at commercial and ABC stations, reaching an audience bigger than ever, providing an example where teenage pirates can enter and succeed in mainstream radio. It's a pity that our FM band is so full that it's hard to find spare space in our capital cities. New Zealand, though, has an arrangement where low-power FM stations can transmit. It would be great fun to have that here. Anyway, that's it for Aussie Pirates in the 90s and 2000s. If you've got a story to tell, let us know in the comments below.